Titus went back in to make preparation. When he went in, he met with the mayor, the city council, the government officials. They gave us the football stadium. They said, we want to make sure if this American comes over to preach that there's lots of people in the stadium, so we want to give you the TV to cover this thing. Wow. We can believe <laughs> this. So, you know, was, they were saying all these things. Well, then Titus said, Sammy, we ought to present. This is, could be a one-time and a lifetime opportunity. We need to present the gospel to every person in the city through literature. And I said, how are we going to do that, Titus? I said, you know, we're, we're not a Billy Graham organization. We're just a little bitty outfit. And I said, how are we going to do that? So when I came back, I went to Lima, Peru for a citywide crusade there. I received a phone call from Dick Eastman, who is president of Every Home for Christ, formerly mm -hmm. World Literature Crusade. Mm -hmm. Dick said, Sammy, we believe you're God's man for Eastern Europe. We want to work with you. We would like to, we have a campaign where we want to put a gospel presentation in every home of every capital city of every republic in the Soviet Union. He said, you're going to Kishinev, why don't we team up? Ah, oh, there's and, the provision for the literature. And they had worked with Billy Graham in the past, that's who they worked with. They put together, we put together this little pamphlet here. Uh, this is a pamphlet and the top parts in, in Romanian, the bottom parts in Russian, so both languages. And it says, Mission Moldavia with Sammy Tippett. At the bottom it says, would you like to have a new life? in both the uh, Romanian language and the Russian language with mm. me. And this picture is of, uh, of that crusade in mm. Bayamari. And uh, on the back side of it is the details of the crusade. But on the inside of this pamphlet is a gospel presentation in the Russian and the Romanian language. And so we, I mean, we, we scrambled to get this translated. We scrambled to get this put together, and at the end of this gospel presentation is a prayer that they can pray to receive Christ. If they pray that prayer, we say that we will enroll them in a correspondence Bible study course. Mm. Now, we had to get all this translated, the course translated, into both Russian and Romanian before we went. We had two months to get this done. And so, uh, here's a little form, a decision form for them to fill out, and we, we did that. Now, this particular pamphlet that you're holding, mm -hmm. one identical to that was placed in the hands before we arrived in Kishinev of every member of the Soviet parliament, plus we gave them a copy of the Bible, I mean not a copy, we gave them a Bible and one of these presentations of, of the Republic of Moldavia. Every member of parliament, 120,000 of these went into every home in Kishinev. We were That's able brilliant. to present the gospel to, to every person. Now, the response was incredible. We didn't know what would happen with the response. You know, we said, if you pray to receive Christ and you want to have this, we just tear off this little piece here sure. and mail it in. I asked them when I got to Kishinev, I said, did you get any responses? They laughed. You know what they said? They said, the post office will not deliver our mail anymore. There's so much mail they can't deliver it. They make us bring it, uh, vans there to pick it up. 50,000 people responded in Kishinev. The first city we went to was the city of Belsi. And I was nervous. I, you know, I didn't know what to expect. And as a matter of fact, I asked the pastors in Titus, Sammy, don't ask them that. But I asked them, I said, is the platform going to be in the middle where we go to one side or are we going to go both sides? Titus said, Sammy, their faith is much greater than that. And what they were actually anticipating, they told the believers, there were only 1,500 to 2,000 believers in the city of 150,000 people. They said, don't sit in the stadium. You stand around the sides. We're expecting the non-Christians to fill the stadium. So in the stadium, it was filled. When I stood How up on the house? How many it, it, uh, 10,000 people. That 10,000 seater football stadium was full of non-Christians. 2,000 Christians standing around, and then probably another couple thousand non-Christians standing around as well. So here we were, and, and, and you know, I was so nervous. I, I, it was like a dream to me come true. I remembering back to being held by those interrogators in, in Leningrad, and now here I am in a stadium in the Soviet Union to stand to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. So we had that crusade that night. So you can imagine there was tension because there's been persecution, there's been all of this. People didn't know what to expect. People had never been to an evangelistic meeting before in their lives. So here's the stadium field, and the tension is thick. Spiritually, Satan has had these people 
indoctrinated with atheism. Blindness. And that's right. So here they are, you know, and, and here for the first time publicly the gospel is going to go forth. Mm. So I'm up preaching, and now this is amazing. While I'm preaching, there are dignitaries behind me, you know, on the platform, and they're seated and all, and, and there's bottles of water. It's during the day. And right in the middle of my message, a bottle of water just explodes. I mean, just out of the clear blue, I have no idea what happened. But I look back, and Titus, my friend, is, is soaking wet. And so I said, oh, Lord. And so I just keep preaching. I get in the middle of John 3, 16, and I say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the power goes off. Fifteen minutes, technicians are running around trying to find out what's happening and what, what, what the problem is. They finally get it fixed. No one leaves. I continue preaching. So I come to the place of the invitation. They've never seen anything like this before. Now remember, they've never had a in public invitation. So I say, if you would like to know Christ, first I have everyone to stand to their feet and bow their heads. I said, if you would like to know Christ, I want you to raise your hand. No one raises their hand. Now I'm in a dilemma because I'm saying, what's going to happen if I ask them to come forward and no one comes? then it's going to be embarrassing with the city council being opposed to this. It's going to be a, a, an item of ridicule. What should I do? And my heart was pounding. I was, I was, you know, as I was talking, I was praying. And, and I said, oh, God, tell me what to do. So I finally said, all right, if you'd like to know Christ, I'm going to ask you to come forward. One lady, a little peasant lady, comes out, this lady here, and she walks down, and she's, look, she's holding flowers in her hand. She walks, she's the only person that comes forward. She walks to the platform out of, this, out of the stands and uh, with courage, not worrying what anyone would say or think, all by herself. She walks in front of me, she stands there, and then she, she reaches up to the platform and she hands me flowers. Now, after she does that, she goes to her knees and she begins to cry into God. As she begins to cry unto God, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds come after her. And at the end, we had 2,000 people that you can see there who come forward and give their hearts to Jesus Christ. All because there was this one lady who was willing to come out and make that commitment and cry unto God. There was a spiritual breakthrough because from that night forward, we saw an incredible response everywhere we went, but it was that one lady's faith. Incredible. <laughs> it, it wasn't just this. When we, that, that was that night. We heard reports that all the churches were filled with new believers the next day.